Today we're going to be talking about the best places to stay when you travel to the happiest place on earth, Disneyland. Welcome to the Savvy Sightseer, the channel that helps you travel savvy. So let's dive right in and take a look at the different hotels that I recommend you stay at when visiting Disneyland. So when it comes to when I'm choosing where to stay, I'm a firm believer in that you have to stay somewhere where you can walk. There's a lot of flexibility in that and allowing you to come and go as you please. It's just more convenient and it actually will just save you time in the long run rather than having to wait for an Uber or uh, bus service or whatever it may be. So with that said, there are a selection of hotels that do allow you to walk. And most of these hotels are located on Harbor Boulevard and Catella Avenue or one of the Disney resorts that are actually right on Disney property. Now, when it comes to choosing a hotel, I always joke that I'm really cheap, but I have very expensive tastes, and that really doesn't stop with hotels. I struggle to stay at hotels that aren't updated or newer, and they have to be clean, and they have to provide a lot of amenities. So that does narrow down the hotels I would recommend when coming to Disneyland. You will find some hotels very close to the entrance, but I simply wouldn't recommend them due to bad reviews that I've read, cleanliness, or just a lack of amenities such as a nice pool. That nice pool on a really hot day after walking around Disneyland is clutch. There are three groups of hotels near the Disneyland Resort. There are the Disneyland Resort Hotels, the Good Neighbor Hotels, and ones not affiliated with Disneyland at all. I personally have only stayed at the good, uh, Disneyland Good Neighbor Hotels and the ones I have stayed at, I have had really good experiences with. And even though these Good Neighbor Hotels that have a relationship with Disney are supposed to be, you know, like approved by Disney, I just really can't recommend them all. They vary in price and quality, so be really careful when choosing one of these. So which hotels do I recommend? Let me break it down for you. First up, we're going to be looking at Disney's Grand Californian. If price is no option and you really want the full Disney experience, the obvious choice is the Disney's Grand Californian. I've not actually stayed at this hotel myself because of the cost. It's hard for me to validate spending that kind of money when the only time I really spend in my hotel room during my Disneyland trips is while I'm sleeping. But I do want to stay here someday. It's definitely a bucket list hotel. I've done a lot of research about this hotel and the reviews can actually be hit or miss with most of them just saying it's not worth the high cost. It averages around $600 to $700 a night for the cheapest rooms. So you are most likely going to spend more, especially for the more popular times at Disneyland, such as Halloween and Christmas. Like I mentioned before, the Disney's Grand Californian sits right on Disney property. It actually sits right in between Disney's Grand Californian and Downtown Disney. So super convenient in terms of getting into both parks. There's actually your own entrance into Disney's Grand Californian and even an entrance straight from Disney Downtown Disney. So it actually makes one of probably the most convenient, easiest hotels in the entire Anaheim area. The hotel design takes notes from the outdoors of Northern California and creates a warm and inviting feeling as soon as you step inside because of its dark wood tones. I have been inside the Grand Californian several times and it's absolutely beautiful, especially at Christmas time. During Christmas, the interior is all decorated and they even have a large gingerbread house. You can't miss it if you're there during Christmas. Even if you don't stay here, you can still go inside and see all the beautiful decorations. They even sell some really delicious treats like the famous gingerbread Mickey, even though it is more expensive there than in the parks. But you can just enjoy the ambiance and the Christmas time spirit. One other thing about the Disney Grand Californian is that hands down it has the best pool out of any of the hotels, motels, resorts near the Anaheim area. So if you are looking for that water park, great pool, this is definitely the best pool. Um, but there are some great other options, which I'll show you in a little bit. One of the biggest perks about staying at a Disneyland resort is that you get early entry into the parks. So with this perk, you get into the parks 30 minutes before other visitors. And during those 30 minutes, there are select rides that are open. The most popular rides such as Rise of the Resistance or Radiator Springs Racers are of course not available during this time. So just kind of keep that in mind. You're not gonna go jump in to the parks and jump right on Rise of the Resistance. But another um, big perk to staying at the Grand Californian is that not only do you get that early entry, but you also have an exclusive entrance into California Adventure. So this puts you right into the park, right into Grizzly River Rapids and the Grizzly Peak area. 
Now the other Disneyland Resort hotels, Paradise Pier, which is actually currently being renovated to have a Pixar theme, and the Disneyland Hotel also have the early entry park. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, these two hotels, the Paradise Pier and the Disneyland Hotel, they're not as expensive as the Grand Californian, but they're still more expensive than other hotels in the area. And I feel you can get a better deal and more bang for your buck with other non-Disney hotels. So I would not put Paradise Pier and Disneyland Hotel in my top rank ones or recommended hotels. Now I have heard good things about them. I've never stayed at either. Um, I definitely know they give you that Disney feel. So if that's something you're looking for and maybe not wanting to spend as much as the Grand Californian, that might be a good option. Now let's quickly talk about another option that is a good neighbor resort and not on Disney property, but is located extremely close. So one of the more popular good neighbor hotels is the Howard Johnson Anaheim Hotel or Hojo as many people call it. And we've stayed here and we actually really enjoyed our stay. It's clean. Most rooms have actually been recently updated and does have one of the better pools in the area. It actually has two different pool areas like a kids water park area. It's not a huge one, but there's one. And then more just of your standard hotel pool. Um, my kids actually liked the more the standard hotel pool better than the water park ironically um, this hotel is located on harbor boulevard making its location pretty ideal and within an eight to ten minute walk to the gates of disneyland probably the biggest drawback to this hotel for us was just the lack of food options there are times when you aren't in the mood for that park food um, and you want something different and hojo doesn't really have anything and you'll have to go to one of the nearby restaurants most of which are just quick service restaurants such as the Panera or McDonald's. So if you're looking for more of a no frills hotel with a good pool and, you know, something easy to walk to and from the parks, I highly suggest this one. It's really well priced. Um, you can often find deals for it. So Hojo is definitely a great option. Next up on our tour of hotels is the Courtyard Anaheim theme park entrance. If I were to choose my favorite hotel to stay at while visiting Disneyland, this would be it. The Courtyard Anaheim theme park entrance is to me the perfect hotel for families, especially if your children are getting older or on the older side. The biggest perk to staying here is that even the basic rooms come with a set of bunk beds. So for us with two children, they each got their own bed and so did we. Now another perk to this hotel is that it has the best non-Disney hotel pool in the area. They actually call it a water park. There's slides, a play area, and it's big. So it doesn't feel overcrowded. My kids loved it here and would beg to leave Disneyland to go play back at the pool. Now, another benefit to staying at this hotel is that it's even closer than the Hojo. Even though these two hotels sit on the same side of the street on Harbor Boulevard and are only separated by a side street and a restaurant, this hotel felt like a much quicker walk than the Hojo did for some reason. It's roughly six to eight minutes before you're at the entrance to Disneyland, which is pretty amazing and is actually quicker than some of the Disneyland Resort hotels. Lastly, which might be the biggest perk for both me and my husband, are the dining options, specifically the fact that they have a Starbucks located right in the lobby. So if you're a coffee drinker and you need that coffee in the morning, which me and my husband do when we're in Disneyland, the ability to grab Starbucks before you get to the gates is like what we prefer. So the food also there, they have this place called the Bistro is really good. And like I mentioned, sometimes you just don't want that park food. So to have this option of somewhere else to eat and being able to take it to your room and eat while you relax is just super helpful. And it has a really good kids breakfast too, making it a perfect option to fuel up before heading into the parks. Now this hotel can vary in price. I have found the earlier you book, the better price you tend to get. And of course, if you're going during a peak time, you can definitely expect to pay higher prices. I've seen it um, somewhere in the $400 range um, during the Halloween and Christmas time. Now we went um, a, two, a year ago during Halloween time, but we booked early and par partially I think it was because it was rolling off of the pandemic. We got pretty good prices and they were in the $200 range. Um, one of the best ways though to book this hotel is through Getaway Today as a vacation package with your tickets included. And that is what we did and it saved us actually quite a bit. Now, um, I talk more about Getaway Today on my um, blog, thesavvysightseer.com. And so you can go check that out and why they're always my first choice for booking my Disneyland trips and tickets. Last but not least, this is probably the newest hotel in the entire Anaheim area. Um, closest to Disneyland and it's the Westin Anaheim Resort. 
we just stayed at the Westin Anaheim Resort for our first time um, in our latest trip to Disneyland a few weeks ago. It is Anaheim's only AAA Four Diamond Hotel, and it's located on Catella Avenue right across from Disneyland California Adventure. And we absolutely loved this hotel, like really loved it. The only reason I prefer the Courtyard Anaheim theme park entrance over this hotel is simply because of the bunk beds and the age of my children at this time. If it wasn't for those bunk beds, the West End would be my first choice. Now, the West End was built on the piece of property where the old Annabella Hotel was located and was recently opened back in June of 2021. And because it's so new, there's so many updated features in your room, like USB ports everywhere, which come in really handy when you're traveling with multiple people and multiple devices. Also, I've never been to a hotel that has so many people just cleaning all the time. The hotel is spotless. More impressive is just the friendliness and helpfulness of the staff. And if you want to splurge and spend a bit more money, you can get a room with a view of Disney California Adventure and the Incredicoaster. The hotel is actually so close that as soon as you step out the front doors, you can hear the screams from that ride as you um, stand right there. Now, the hotel is located on the opposite corner of the park from the Hojo and Courtyard Anaheim, and it's on the corner of Catella Avenue and Disneyland Drive. And even though it's technically located farther from the entrance to the parks, I preferred this walk more. The walk was actually closer to 20 to 25 minutes. And as soon as you cross the street though, from the corner of the hotel, you're right on Disney property. So when you walk down Harbor, you're passing fast food restaurants, older hotels, lots and lots of people. And they're all just kind of hustling in these big masses to Disneyland, just like you are. But this walk from the West End takes you down past the Paradise Pier Hotel and then the Grand Californian and eventually right into downtown Disney. And what we found by going this way is that you get through security faster and feel like you're in the Disney bubble almost instantly. So despite the longer walk, we liked it more. And given the fact you'll be walking and walking and walking all day long, this extra time might be a deal breaker for some, but for us, we were exhausted by the time we got back to our hotel and just made us enjoy those West End Heavenly Beds even more. Now, this hotel also had several dining options right on site. So again, that was huge for us because we do get tired of the park food and sometimes we just want something different. So this hotel offered many different choices. Some were much more fancier than others that definitely we couldn't go sit down and eat in in our park attire. Um, but it did have something for everyone. And we even took advantage of ordering food from the bar at 1030 one night and brought it back up to our room. It was actually really good, hot, fresh, tasted great. And there's also a small coffee shop called Blossom Cafe that was perfect to grab a quick breakfast and coffee in the morning. Now our absolute favorite restaurant here was Puesto. We love Puesto. Um, my kids love this place and we're begging to go here the whole trip. We had discovered Puesto while in San Diego for our spring break trip and was one of the main choices for staying at the Anaheim, um, the West End. And um, we, as soon as we saw that there's a Puesto inside, we're like, oh, this hotel is meant for us. So this location of Puesto is located on the same property as the West End. And so on our last night at Disneyland, we went here for dinner at a, as our last hurrah, and it was so delicious. I recommend the Puesto Perfect Margarita, or two, and the Short Rib Quesabaria Taco. Um, they're the most delicious little tacos. They, it's just, they're great. And when looking at, into hotels to stay at, when we visit Disneyland, a pool is always a must. And you never know what the temperatures will be while visiting Southern California. One year when we visited in October, we had temperatures in the mid 80s. And a few years later, when we visited at the same time in October, we had a low 60s and rain. But the year it was in the mid 80s, we used that pool a lot. Now the pool at the Westin is on the smaller side, like many hotel pools near Disneyland. Um, and it is no, by no means fancy or water park like, like the Hojo or Courtyard or Grand Californian but they did a really nice job designing it. It sits towards the side and front of the hotel and they have tried to create a more secluded feel with lots of tropical landscaping. There are these big palm trees and bushes blocking the nearby street and my kids enjoyed it and that was all that mattered. One other benefit to this hotel is that they had bottled water for you. They place a few bottles in your room to start, but you can also grab water at the valet station right outside of the hotel entrance. So each morning when we were heading to the park, we would get grab fresh bottles of water. And each time we return, we would grab more to take back to our room. And to me, this is a really big extra that other hotels just don't offer. 
I don't like the taste of the water, um, like tap water in California. So I always buy bottled water and it's just more convenient too to carry into the parks. And this saved me money and was just very convenient. Overall, these are the hotels that I would recommend when staying at Disneyland. They definitely aren't the cheapest hotels, but the cheaper hotels are ones that I haven't stayed at, nor will I ever. Um, after spending so much time researching reviews, these are the only hotels I would stay at. And the next time we go, we will be staying at the Courtyard Anaheim simply because we'll have kids in tow and they're at those older ages that they just need their own beds. Now this hotel consistently gets raving reviews from almost everyone who stays there. And it was the most comfortable stay for us in terms of space, number of beds and amenities available for the whole family. Now, on the other hand, if we were just traveling as an adults only trip, hands down, we would be staying at the Westin Anaheim Resort again. These are both amazing hotels to choose from. And I know you won't be disappointed either way, whichever one you choose, but these are my top two picks for places to stay while visiting Disneyland.